first of all, what is the law of one vibe? Like when I say that, to me, that represents the overview vibe or the cosmic vibe where we're looking at our progress and we're looking at our lives and we're looking at the intention of sessions like these from a more expanded point of view, from an outside of the box point of view, from a beyond this incarnation point of view, from a more cosmological point of view. And the benefit of zooming out is it puts things in perspective and allows you to course correct with less distortion, less detours, less time consuming. Helpful because from the point of view of this incarnation, time is precious. We only have so much of it. There's only so much experience that can be squeezed into a single incarnation. Obviously from the incarnational point of view, you're underneath the clouds. Like if you picture a mountain, the base of the mountain, looking at the mountain from the worldly point of view or the incarnational point of view, especially third density incarnation, with the veil there, the veil being represented by the layer of clouds. This mountain of the total view of your journey extends beyond those clouds. So if you were to look at it from the peak, you are above the veil. You're above the incarnational veil. You're above the limited perspective, which then allows you to send signals to your incarnational consciousness so that it can find a more direct route up the hill, up the mountain. Whereas otherwise you might just be spending a lot of time, a lot of experience, a lot of catalysts repeating certain things that you don't have to repeat. One of my favorite quotes of the loved one is coming through. So let me look that up real quick and quote it to you. Might be a good starting point. And I love it because it almost contradicts a whole lot of the other information. Not so much that it contradicts it, but a lot of the law of one stuff is about the journey and it's about where we're at as human beings. And it's about sort of that progressional path of step by step, understanding the self, accepting the self, etc., which is good. But then in this quote, one could interpret it as almost nullifying it or offering you always that possibility or opportunity to quantum leap beyond the necessity of what a lot of the other stuff in the Law of One teaches. It doesn't contradict itself, but it, every once in a while through the Law of One, it will offer a little statement that just cuts through a lot of the journey, almost as if to preserve free will, but to still infuse the whole material for those that are ready with sort of a higher note within this octave of experience. Ra, I am Ra. Consider, if you will, that the universe is infinite this has yet to be proven or disproven, but we can assure you that there is no end to yourselves, your understanding, what you would call your journey of seeking, or your perceptions of the creation. That which is infinite cannot be many, for manyness is a finite concept. To have infinity, you must identify or define that infinity as unity, otherwise the term does not have any referent or meaning. First of all, even if you get that logically, like intuitive, with intuitive logic, it's profound. To have infinity, you must identify or define that infinity as unity. At first, this may just be intellectual, but when you like start to really get it, otherwise the term does not have any referent or meaning. Because if you, th if you consider, if you imagine infinity, even if you're just using the mind, which is used to space and time, if you imagine infinite space and infinite time, with the emphasis on the word infinite, which means like truly endless, infinite, then if you introduce the concept of manyness or two, to keep it simple, of two-ness, duality, say that there would be another infinity, then that would nullify, that would cancel out the meaning of the word infinity. By definition, if it's infinite, you can't have two of it because then where would the first infinity end and the second infinity start? then it wouldn't be infinite, it would be just a finite thing. So, that which is infinite cannot be many, for manyness is a finite concept. It means you have an end to something and then something else starts that is secondary to it. To have infinity you must identify or define that infinity as unity, otherwise the term does not have any referent or meaning. In an infinite creator, there is only unity. You have seen simple examples of unity, you have seen the prism which shows all colors stemming from the sunlight. This is a simplistic example of unity. And here we're getting to the part that I was wanting to raise. In truth, there is no right or wrong. In truth, in truth, there is no right or wrong. There is no polarity, for all will be, as you would say, reconciled at some point in your dance 
through the mind-body-spirit complex, which you amuse yourself by distorting in various ways at this time. I'll repeat that sentence before I continue. There is no polarity, for all will be, as you would say, reconciled at some point in your dance through the mind-body-spirit complex, which you amuse yourself by distorting in various ways at this time. This distortion is not in any case necessary. It is chosen by each of you as an alternative to understanding the complete unity of thought which binds all things. As you would say, all shall be reconciled at some point in your dance through the mind-body-spirit complex, which you amuse yourself by distorting in various ways at this time. This distortion or this distorting is not in any case necessary. It gives you a way out right there. You don't have to distort. It gives you an option from wherever you are at. It tells you it's not necessary. You don't actually have to go through that. It is simply chosen by each of you as an alternative, as an alternative to understanding the complete unity of thought which binds all things. You are not speaking of similar or somewhat alike entities or things. You are everything, every being, every emotion, every event, every situation. You are unity. You are infinity. You are love light, light love. You are. This is the law of one. In truth, there is no right or wrong. There is no polarity for all will be, as you would say, reconciled at some point in your dance through the mind-body-spirit complex, which you amuse yourself by distorting in various ways at this time. This distorting is not in any case necessary. It is chosen by each of you as an alternative to understanding the complete unity of thought which binds all things. You are not speaking of similar or, or somewhat like entities or things. You are everything, every being, every emotion, every event, every situation. You are unity. You are infinity. You are love light. Light love. You are. This is the law of one. What I love about this, again, is the way out, right? It's not a way out as in avoid everything. It's a way out because it highlights that you don't have to amuse yourself with the distortions. You're choosing it as an alternative to understanding the complete unity of thought which binds all things. Just get that. And as part of what I've been feeling and what gave rise to the next level, dialogues, is that very principle. Is that you don't have to continue to amuse yourself. That's why every time we say, but what's next level? Every time a dialogue begins or a Q&A begins and I pause you and I say, but you're still coming from that same alternative choice. You're still not choosing. And then people get frustrated because they're like, yeah, but how, but why? No, I mean, I'm sincere. But you're not seeing that you're choosing the alternative to understanding yourself as everything. So you're perpetuating it. You're feeling it. You are choosing it as an alternative. It's your choice to amuse yourself with distorting mind, body, spirit, complex journey. You don't have to. It's not in any case necessary. It's not necessary. That's the next level message. It's not necessary to distort. To amuse yourself with distortions is not in any case necessary. It's chosen by each of you as an alternative to understanding the complete unity of thought which binds all things. Or simply, the complete understanding of unity. So, that puts the ball in your court. It's like, well, do you want to understand the complete unity of all things? Or do you want to amuse yourself, which is the previous level, with the distortions? Do you want to keep being amused by the distortions? It's an alternative, and you're choosing it. So it's not in any case necessary. That's the message of the next level, is it's not necessary. And we're going to focus on those who understand that they can choose the alternate path, or the non-alternate path, I guess. The path of truth, instead of the path of amusement. The next level is not about amusement. I mean, it's, it's enjoyable, it's fun. But it's not about amusing yourselves with distortions.